In this clip, I'm talking about the procedures required to find a well specified model. Let's start with the following sort of base model. Let's just call it a base model just to start our thinking dependent variable y, two explanatory variables xi and zi, and cross section data here. And that's what we're going to concentrate on. And we can then use all s to obtain parameter estimates for the alphas, three of them in this example. And it's really inference in these alphas which we are interested in. The question is, which assumptions do we need to hold such that we can perform inference in this example? So let's, and when you think inference, you could think of a t-test here. Let's think about the simple hypothesis. So what we need is we need to remind ourselves of the uh, six assumptions we talked about. The first one is that the model is correct and linear and parameters. Second, that we have random sampling. Then there's also the assumption of the absence of perfect multicollinearity. A4 is the zero conditional mean assumption. A5 is almost catastasticity of error terms, constant variance, and A6 was error term normality. So these were the assumptions. So the question is, when can we perform inference using the t-test? If all six assumptions are met, the classical linear regression model assumptions, the t-test will follow a t-distribution. If only the first five are met, then the t-test is asymptotically normally distributed. If the first four hold, then the t-test is also asymptotically normally distributed, but in the t-test we need to make sure that we use wide standard errors. So it's robust inference, robust to heteroscedasticity. The, it's obvious from here that assumptions A1 to A4 are crucial. It is not too difficult to guarantee the absence of multicollinearity. We talked about this in that section. Now, random sampling, that's more of an issue for time series data, which will ignore for the time being A4. Zero, the zero conditional mean assumption, that is really absolutely crucial. So it's really, really essential. And therefore, we'll actually have uh, specific topics on this and they're going to be called proxy variables and instrumental variables estimation section. So we'll ignore it for the time being. Now A1 is equally crucial and therefore we should really ensure that our model is a good model. Now, what, what does that mean a good model? Well it's really a model where we consider all relevant variables. And that's really important. And um, we talked about that previously. We would also want to make sure that we actually consider all sensible functional forms. Now both functional forms variables, of course, should be motivated from our economic model we are looking at, but we'll leave that generic here. And we should also consider whether there are any structural breaks. Now, we've talked about tests for all of these, for instance, the RISA test or the Chow test for structural break. That's what you need to use here. Once you've done that, and you perhaps included dummy variables for structural breaks, we may still have several models that sort of look okay at this stage. And the question then is, what do we, what do, we do? It is at this stage that we can think back to what we really want to do, and that is performing inference on our estimated coefficients, which have some economic meaning. The, so therefore we need to go back and look at our assumptions. We talked about A4, so now we're gonna be concerned with A5 and A6. So let's start with A6 the normality assumption. So you could now test for error normality in their tests, um, but it's really only relevant for small samples. As we discussed previously, if A6 doesn't hold, we still have an asymptotic normal distribution of the t-test, uh, and we don't deal with that here. Now then, of course, 
A5, you want to establish that we don't have heteroscedasticity, so that the homoscedasticity assumption holds. So that means whatever models are still left in your um, in in your bag of possible models should be tested for heteroscedasticity. And of course, there's a number of tests. For instance, the white test. Now, once you've done that. You should know that we do prefer generally models which don't have heteroscedasticity. So that may be a differentiating factor. But if there's heteroscedasticity in your preferred model or models, in fact, then you want to make sure that you use robust inference. But that's perfectly possible. So, for instance, you need to use the white standard errors in the t test. If at this stage, you still have models that you that you consider uh, good enough to use, then you you somehow need to compare between these. Well, firstly, at this stage, you should be happy. Okay, so you you certainly have something you can work with, and then we can use additional criteria to perhaps differentiate between the models. So we can evaluate them by the fit, for instance, R squared or information criteria, which we don't really talk about here. Or you may consider comparing their forecast performances. It may be that models differentiate themselves here. Let's summarize what we've discussed. In the end, we are interested in parameter inference, for instance, the parameters in that model, which we started off with. So absolutely crucial are going to be these estimates. And we want to know, we want to have inference. We realized to establish the type of inference required, we need to know something about the assumptions. First assumptions A1 to A4, we can't do without. So that means we need to look at A4, we'll do that in the next section. A1, we need to look at all relevant variables, functional forms, structural breaks, and so on. And we need to try to take this into account. Once we've done that, that's when we look at first normality, although we haven't really talked about that, and then heteroscedasticity. So we prefer models that are not that have no heteroscedasticity. If we can't avoid heteroscedasticity, we at least need to make sure we use robust inference. So if you then still have several models which are sort of equal on the above criteria, then you can compare models by fit.